Yesterday, we began our discussion by keying in on strategies for creating jobs, strengthening communities, and protecting our environment and climate at the same time. We addressed transportation's role in, clean, in the clean energy future. We explored methods for developing energy efficient transportation systems. We identified opportunities to promote environmentally sustainable alternatives to petroleum and we discussed ways to forge the public-private partnerships necessary to fund these efforts. Today, our work shifts to the related and critically important areas of safety and security, something we're all especially mindful as we mark the 10th anniversary of September 11, 2011. Two, strengthening and diversifying our transportation workforces. And three, using transportation investments as a way to promote economic growth and expand trade. Let me say that uh, President Obama's administration, these are among our top transportation priorities, along with passing the American Jobs Act, which the President now has sent a piece of legislation to Capitol Hill in the last few days, which will put more people back to work and more money into the pockets of our American workers. I have said many times that there's nothing more important than safety. It's the first thing we think about at the Department of Transportation every day, and it's the thing that keeps us awake at night. That's why we're working together to strengthen aviation and rail safety. That's why we're reminding people to always fasten their seat belts and to never drink behind the wheel. And that's why we've taken on the epidemic that I call an epidemic, distracted driving. When we think of the world's leading causes of death, heart disease or HIV AIDS, malaria or tuberculosis, it's easy to forget that road crashes claim more than 1.3 million lives each year. That's the equivalent of one death every 30 seconds. The World Health Organization projects that by, the World Health Organization projects that by 2030, traffic accidents will climb to become the fifth leading cause of deaths worldwide. The Global Road Safety Partnership estimates that driver behavior, including distracted driving, is responsible for between 80 and 90 percent of all roadway accidents. In 2009, I traveled to Moscow for the first global ministerial conference on roadway safety, where the Russian president and I issued a call to end the deadly behavior of texting and talking behind the wheel. In 2010, United Nations Secretary General and our ambassador to the United Nations and I met in New York where the Secretary General imposed a directive barring the UN's 40,000 employees from texting messages while operating vehicles on official business. And this past spring, the international community kicked off the United Nations World Health Organization's Decade of Action for Road Safety 2011-2020. Together, we're making important progress. 17 of the 20 APEC economies and a total of more than 50 nations around the world have passed laws that restrict drivers' use of handheld devices. Portugal has even outlawed all phone use in the driver's seat handheld or hands-free. Congratulations, Portugal. And we can do more if we work together. President Obama's administration and the U.S. government stand ready to lend our experience to any country looking for ideas about how to change drivers' minds and drivers' habits. At the same time, we're also taking on another major challenge, building the transportation workforce of the 21st century, our second theme of the day, and specifically at the U.S. Department of Transportation, we're connecting women with opportunities to succeed. For our part, we've taken a number of steps. We've encouraged young women to pursue study in the STEM disciplines. That's science, technology, 
engineering, and math. STEM is one of our highest priorities in President Obama's administration. We've developed mentorship programs for young women interested in joining the field. We need to get more women into transportation. And we've put in place a pipeline that will bring a new generation of young women into the transportation industries. The good news is that as we revitalize our nation's transportation system, the opportunities for young women are enormous. We see rising demand for environmental engineers and technicians. We see rising demand for skilled professionals in the high-speed rail business and aerospace industry. Or take aviation, where we're making huge technological leap forward and a transitional from a radar-based air traffic control system to a satellite-based system. This groundbreaking effort requires a new generation of well-trained experts with technical know-how. In particular, we need a smart new generation of air traffic controllers and flight data coordinators as, our gener as th this generation retires. And we believe women ought to fill each of these essential roles. As I have had an opportunity during the last two and a half years to meet with CEOs and executives of the airline industry, uh, as I sit around the table with them, I don't see any women heading those organizations up. As I've had a chance over the last two and a half years to sit around the table with the CEOs of the car companies, I don't see any women sitting at those tables. That's what our goal is, is to allow women to move up to the kind of positions uh, that, where we can really tap into their talent. So we're looking forward to delving into the topic of transportation as an economic engine. For one thing, we'll discuss the importance of aviation liberalization so people and goods can move without hindrance across the Asia-Pacific region. For another, we'll talk about a, talk about aligning the public-private partnerships and other funding mechanisms that make big projects economically viable. This is the idea behind President Obama's proposal for a national infrastructure bank included in the American Jobs Act. It's also the rationale behind our competitive transportation grants making program. And over the past two years, it's provided the perfect example how we leverage local, state, federal, and private dollars in the service of a simple goal, putting people back to work today while rebuilding our infrastructure for the years ahead. Ultimately, this points to what I hope we all gain from this conference, new perspectives on how to make smart choices at a time when we're all trying to make the most of every dollar. I think we're doing that in President Obama's administration and at the U.S. Department of Transportation. And I look forward to continuing this valuable exchange of ideas so that we can do even better. Thank you very much.